Yo, what's good, guys? All right, so I thought I'd do this video. I've been paying attention to a couple of the comments in the Discord. And someone mentioned that I should do a video on risk management. Now, let me tell you how it works, guys. All right. I've wrote and I've sorry, I've written about this in the past where if you go into the actual blog itself, I talk about mind management versus money management. All right. And you can't have one without the other. All right. You can have the best risk management system out there. All right. But if you haven't got the mindset to actually apply yourself accordingly, then it's pointless. There's no point in having any structure or trying to stick to a structure or a system, a methodology, whatever you want to classify it as, if you haven't got the mindset to follow through with it. Okay, Bitcoin's dropping, cool. Regardless of whether it's dropping or rising, your risk management can only really be applied effectively if you have the mindset that is married to it. So let me give you an example. Risk management would say the only risk, a certain percentage, the way you establish your exposure on your account is all down to how much size you put down, if you have leverage, all right? What are the factors that are going to reflect on your exposure to risk, okay? This is why I go on about accuracy in this game. You're not going to find the perfect entry and neither is your statistical approach to this game is going to be reflected on how well a trade plays out. So just because you say by risk, if I risk 1% on this trade of my account balance, I know I'm going to lose X amount if my area of exposure gets hit or my stop or my liquidation, whatever you want to call it. And by that token, because I've done a good risk analysis on my trade, I'm going to be expecting it to play out because I'm applying the correct risk management. No, it doesn't work like that. Like I said, you can have two people that are applying the same strategy that has a 99% win rate, but one of them loses and they lose bad. It doesn't make sense. How can you be the guy that continuously loses on a strategy that guarantees giving you a 99% success rate, right? What's missing? The guy that's obviously applying it correctly, he's understanding risk, he's understanding how to uh, make his entries, he's reading the patterns correctly, and then you've got the guy with exactly the same system and he loses. It doesn't make sense. But then here's another one. You can only win 40% of the time and still be a profitable trader. What's going on? Is that got anything to do with risk management? Yes. But what else is really behind the scenes of being able to win at only winning 40% of the time, but losing 60% of the time? How is that possible? Mindset. It's simple. And it sounds cliche. But it really is all down to how you think. You can't be naive into thinking that if you apply a optimal risk management strategy that it's always going to be in your favor every time you place a trade. Oh, look, you know, I'm, I'm sticking to my risk. Nah, it doesn't work like that. It's how you think whilst you're in a trade. How are you processing exposure? Which then allows me to tell you that the true way or the only way for you to manage risk effectively is to think in the concept of survival. All right. You are at war when you come into the charts and people don't take it seriously enough. You are at war, not with the market makers, not with the algorithms, but yourself. It's you who determines how much money you want to lose. It's you that's going to be the one that's going to be holding on to a position because you've spent so much time analyzing it or you don't want to come on. You know, you don't want to lose any money or you've been you've so far you've had so many bad trades. You don't want this one to be a bad trade. It's you that holds on to the risk. All right. Statistically, risk works. Okay. If you expose yourself to 1% every time you actually place a trade 
and your risk is 1% to 2%, statistically, it's easy to recover, all right? The maximum exposure that someone should put on their account is at max 8%. Why? Because you're only going to need about 10, 11% to break even. So the return is going to be easily, you're going to be able to achieve that. If you risk 20%, you need to at least hit 40% on your next trade to break even. You risk 50%, you need 100% to come back to square one. Now, how? what's easier? 8%, 1%, 3%, 2%, or 20%, 30%, 50%. You do the math. Statistically, risk management, okay? works in the ideal world of applying it optimally, but you're not in the ideal world. How many times have I actually placed a stop and then moved it? How many times have I adjusted my risk when I've gone into a trade beforehand? I knew exactly how much I was going to put down and I knew exactly how much I was happy to lose. Yet I changed it. You either place a stop or you make a commitment that you're only going to risk a certain amount of money. Now, do you know how hard it is to be in a trade without a stop and you're watching price go towards the zone where you think it's going to start getting a bit uncomfortable for your account to see that exposure and close it? It's uncomfortable because you always have in the back of your mind, what if it turns and goes in my favor? Well, if you want to come away from that concept, all right, if your trade doesn't go in your favor within the first two hours, okay, and you haven't seen a profit within two hours, you close your trade and you go back to the drawing board. Now, that's not to say that you sit through the whole two hours, all right, because look at it like this. If your entry to go long, all right, was here, for example, all right, let's just bring you an example. Say you went long on the this this green candle here. You wanted to ride the move up, okay? Well, first things first, whenever we see a green vector candle, we always want a confirmation candle to continue back up, okay? Now, two hours. What's two hours in the 15-minute time frame? It's eight bars, right? Eight candlesticks. So, you went long on this move here. 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45, 60, that's one hour. And then one, two, three, four, that's two hours, okay? Your risk within those two hours should have been hit. But that's not to say that you have to sit in that for the whole two hours before you make a decision. There is nothing stopping you from actually closing your position sooner, change in direction. See, this is the problem that people have when it comes to managing risk. If their trade gets stopped out, they're always going to be looking at trying to get back in in the desired direction that they were initially looking for. Can you change your mind to go the opposite direction? Can you place a long and then instantly think, hold on, this isn't right. Price isn't moving in my favor. I'm going down for the short. Change direction. It's a difficult thing. And a lot of people say that whenever you're, if you've hit your stop for the day or if you've hit three trades in a row for the day and you've lost, call it a day. Hell no. Because if you have that sort of mentality, all right, you're not exposing your, you're not allowing yourself to develop in times of adversity. You are losing three trades in a row. Does that mean you have to cut up shop? What if you change direction and price goes in your favor and you recover the three losses? Now, of course, that's hindsight. It's easy to say that, all right? But you need to understand something. You can't have a bias when you're trading. You have to trade what you see because every single candle is different. There's a difference in where the market maker wants to send price. Look, if you didn't see these candlesticks here and you saw price was rising up, rising up, and you saw this green vector candle, you would assume that there was a breakout moving to the upside. All right. You would have assumed that the moon boys would have thought, yep, price is going to continue higher. But wait for confirmation. Look what happened. Price then turned back down to the 50. All right. 
If you had waited the whole two hours, you would have got out here. Then you would have said, you know what? I'm not going to trade anymore for the day. And then you waited. You waited. You went away. You come back to the chart as always. Because wherever someone gets stopped out or wherever your entry was, then you got out. Because you wanted to cut your loss. You'll always go back to the chart to see had you have not closed it. And you want to know where price goes. That's curiosity right there. That's just to see if you made the right move or not. I know I do it. And I know a lot of other people do it. So let's take it by this token. If you had have seen that this candle came up and you stopped out at this point here, and then you see price goes back down, you're happy with yourself. You would agree that it was the best move that you made. Okay. You were happy to close at that point and you were glad that you stuck to the two hours. Okay. But then what if price came back down here and then bounced higher? You would have felt so bad. You would not have been happy. You would have been gutted. Yeah. You would have said, oh, if only I had only just, you know, had more risk or I exposed my account a little further. Wrong. You can't have that mentality. When you come to the chart, you look at what is. Let's have a look. Let's look at Bitcoin right now. Okay. Bitcoin range daily low. Tap the date range daily low. One, two, three, three times. Notable volume coming away from the 50 EMA on the 15 minute time frame. What can we assume at this point? All right. So if I decide to go long at this point right here. I will collate all of the confluences that are in my favor. So I'll say to myself, all right, price is at the range daily low. Usually price tends to move away from this point. Are we going to see a retrace back to the 50? You make that decision. You place your long. You go long and then you wait. You see if price does come up. If it doesn't, if you don't realize a profit within two hours, close your trade. Because if price just stays stagnated in this zone and doesn't go anywhere, you're not going to be losing any money if you close a trade. Rather that you get out because at a moment's notice, they could spike lower. You don't want to put yourself in that position. So if it hasn't moved in your favor straight away, or at least within 30 minutes of you placing the trade, all right, there's a good chance that you're not in the right move because the momentum's not there, which is why I say to you, Always trade the busiest times of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All right. Mondays, false move week, beginning, building positions, working in and around the psychological high and low for the week. Okay. Friday, they're building positions, setting everything up for the weekend for another false move, fake move. And then they're going to be coming into Sunday where they form the psychological high and low for the week. All right. Risk is about survival. Risk is about getting your money in good. OK, and taking it out when it's not doing you any good and changing direction. Yeah, because if you make an entry and it doesn't go in your favor. By simply changing direction, you will probably realize a little bit more profit. Because think about it, if you go long and price doesn't continue up, something's wrong. You may not have caught the right move. You may not have got the right entry. Change direction. Cut your losses, change direction. And if you're wrong in that instance and price keeps going up in that favor, completely kill the trade and wait for price to make a clear distinction that they do favor higher prices, which then leads me on to the next step. Do not open marginal positions. And when I say that, do not open trades where straight after you place the trade, you're not feeling too good about it. Are you placing trades because you don't want to miss out? Don't get caught in that, guys, because you will be forever just placing trades. You will not be calculated. You will not be systematic or objective when it comes to trading. You'll just be trading for the thrill of being in a trade. And if you're right, you'll be happy. If you're wrong, you'll take the loss and you'll be like, right, you know, I'll start again. I'll go back to the idea of excitement in trading. Trading cannot be exciting. If trading is exciting, you are now playing roulette. And that's not what this game's about. Trading is a very taxing business because it's all on you. There's no two ways about it, guys. This business is hard. And if you don't take it seriously, you will pay for that seriousness. You will be the guy that starts with 10,000 pounds or 5,000, 1,000. And you'll be the same guy that looks at his account and it is zero. You will all have one thing in common. All the zeros that you see on your account is because your figure is negative. Nothing. Why? Because you're coming into this game excited. Which is why I say to you, forget the money.
Focus on the approach. Focus on maintaining accuracy to the best level. You're not going to get a perfect entry. Your risk management isn't going to be perfect if you haven't got the mindset behind to back that risk management. If you say that you're going to risk 1% in a trade but not put any stop losses, but then end up losing that 1% and then allowing it to go to 2, to 3, to 4 because you personally have the ability to absorb that risk, well, why did you not start with 3% in the first place? Why are you starting off with 1%? Are you conservative? Maybe. Is it because everybody says don't risk more than 1% to 2% on your account? No. You do what you do. If you're comfortable risking 50% on your account, that's you. That means if it does go against you, you've got a lot of work to put in to get it back to break even. At least at 1% to 2%, even 8%. If you're coming into this game and you can lose 8% and not actually make back 10%, this game isn't for you. If you risk a certain amount of money that you know you can't make back, don't take the risk. Don't even place the trade. You have to understand something as well, guys, right? When you're putting down hard cash, it's a funny thing because you'll always be saying to yourself, with the money that you've lost, what you could have done with that money and how quick it can go. That's the messed up thing. You can lose a lot of money in a short amount of time and you'll always be wondering what you could have done with that money because in your mind, you'll be saying to yourself, man, I lost that money. Well, I could have gone out and brought something. And you know what's funny? The money that you put into this in the back of your mind, you'll be thinking what you could have got with that money, how much it would be easier if you had that money to do something else. You lose that money and you think, man, all I needed to do was just not put the money in there. I could have got this, but I'm coming into this game because I want to understand it and I can only earn money by putting money down. But what I'm trying to say to you guys is to not focus on the money. Which means that true risk management is all down to survival. In other words, when you're losing, it isn't going to have an effect on you. But when you're winning, it's going to be making a difference to your account. That's the secret. Make your losses so small that to recover those losses, it only takes a couple of good moves. All right? But the reason why people get blown out in this game is because they sit with a lot of leverage, they sit with exposure, and they think that they'll worry about having to build up their account if they lose, if the trade doesn't go in their favor. They'll think about it later. Right now, we're sitting in risk. We're sitting with leverage. Oh, I've got, you know, 75x on Ethereum and all of that madness. There's no glory in who can hold the most amount of leverage. And there's no glory behind who can sit through the biggest risk. This game is based on your behavior. All right. You don't need to worry about who else has done what. You don't need to care if they're risking 100x or 10x or 3x. Your trading shouldn't be reflective of how other people trade. Once you start getting into that vortex of thought, you're going to be forever trying to maintain that trading way. It's no different to someone on Instagram. They give you the idea that their life is amazing. They've got all these nice expensive things. Well, guys, they need to be buying those things for every post that they decide to put up. Okay. They have in their mind that they always need to have something bigger and better. And by the time it's like, you know, when you see a new phone, you upgrade your phone, you get the latest iPhone out. Three weeks later, another one is out. Your phone is old news. But there are people out there that will pressurize themselves to maintain the idea that life is great for them on the gram. And trading is no different. There are traders out there that will try and maintain a way or any image of trading by having 75x, 100x or making these big trades. A gambler will tell you how much he can win, but a trader will tell you how much he can lose. Don't be that gambler. Be the person that comes into the game and says, listen, I'm going to risk a certain amount of money. My plan is, of course, 
to make some money. But the only way that I can make the money in the first place is to focus on how I'm going to make the right trade. The right trade doesn't mean it needs to be perfect. It, mean, it needs to be accurate. Always assess your accuracy in your trades by not risking too much. For those of you that are new to this channel and you're new to trading as a whole, your goal isn't to make money. And I'm sorry, if you don't like to hear that, get out from the channel. Your goal is to master the entry because there's only one thing that can happen. And I know you've heard me say it many a times. If your trade is correct, what can happen? You make money. So if I'm guaranteeing to you that if your entry is somewhat accurate and it's favorable and you've got all the confluences in your favor and you're applying your trading, your trading in that way, the only thing that can happen is the trade with a positive outcome makes money. All right. Eliminate the concept of being results based orientated. That means when you place a trade, you say, I want to make a hundred pounds. Well, what if that hundred pounds is going to cost you 500 to make? Do you understand that? People come in and say, I want to make X amount of money. And just because they've set the goal to trading that they want to make an X amount of money on that trade, they're going to make it wrong. The law of attraction, the secret, higher frequencies of thought don't really apply in the game of trading. However, if you train yourself to be disciplined, if you train yourself to accept the terms and conditions that are required in trading, be systematic, objective, because I'm not going to say to you to not be emotional. You can't be unemotional in this game. It's impossible to be unemotional. That's a lie. Anyone that tells you you can cut your emotions off, they are lying to you. They are giving you one of the biggest things that runs this game, and that is emotions. And they're telling you that you can operate without it. All right, if you have a, have yourself an algorithm that buys and sells for you, okay, and you don't place any trades, that does that eliminate emotions? No, because why? You're always going to be thinking about whether your algorithm is working or not. You're going to get excited when the algorithm works. You're going to get a little bit sad if the algorithm isn't working. You can't eliminate emotions, but you can manage your expectations. You can manage the way you behave when you're in trading by being systematic and objective. It's all probabilities. One or two things can happen in your trade, guys. You can either make money or you don't. The idea is when you don't make money, you don't lose a lot of it. But when you make money, you make enough of it to cover the loss that you didn't. This is the thing about risk. It's about staying in the game. Your goal as traders is to stay in the game, not try and get out as soon as you can. You haven't come into trading and deposited a certain amount of money and you say, right, I'm happy to lose this. Who's happy to lose money? No one is happy to lose money. There's costs of business. If you want to see it as a business, small business owners have the biggest risk. They rely on customers to come into their premises, their business, their buy online, whatever. They're the ones that put the hard risk up. Yeah, because if no one buys their product, the business doesn't survive. In this game, you have to have money behind you in order to make money, because if you don't have any money, you can't trade. So in order to eliminate the idea of losing it all, trade light. Because at the end of the day, when you apply a strategy over and over again, once you become proficient, you'll be able to place trades and not being them for so long so that a small move makes you a very handsome sum of money. That's the key to this strategy, guys, is to become so proficient that once you put money in, it's a decent size and you're out before anything can happen because you've understood that you've able, you're able to exploit the market and, and take a lot of money sooner rather than holding it for a long time, waiting for a profit target to hit. Here's an example. Let's drop on to the five minute time frame. Okay. So if we were to just say that we were going to go short on price breaking this zone right here, 
and I put down a lot of money, all right? I'll be getting out before this candle even finishes. Now this little move here, doesn't look like it's a lot, but what's behind that move? What's my size? These sort of moves right here, okay, can help, you know, you can earn easy five, six grand on these sort of moves. Of course, you're gonna need a lot of money behind you to be able to start sitting on that sort of um, return. But what my point is, is people start off with small amounts of money and they try and catch big moves because they want to grow their account. Well, as a scalper, I understood that if I'm going to be a swing trader and wait for price from this high to come all the way down to here, so hypothetically, we were to get enter at short on this point and move all the way down here, all right? Well, there's nothing stopping me from scalping this move rather than holding it and waiting for price to go all the way back down. I can grab the same amount of pip scalping as a trader would who's swing trading. See, a swing trader might aim for 150 pips in a week. I can achieve 150 pips in a day or two. Why? Because I'm opening and closing. Catch four pips, out. Catch 10 pips, out. There's 14. I've already done 10% of what the swing trader is going to do. And the swing trader could sit through some big drawdowns. Price might go against him. I'm going to be scalping that all the way back up. A swing trader doesn't have that luxury. He opens his trade and he waits for it to play out. If he's going to be a little bit creative, he might also hedge. But nine times out of ten, a swing trader is not going to be doing that unless you are advanced in your trading approach. The takeaway from this video, guys, is simple. Understand, this game is evolving. And it's all about how you adapt and apply yourself in the realms of uncertainty. Nothing is guaranteed. It's clear that nothing is guaranteed. Just look at Bitcoin. Look at this zone that it's coming back down to take. The previous vector candle in sight. All right. It's tapped it once. It's trying to go for it again. We've got this area right here. A swing trader. Of course, if he entered short up here, he's laughing because he's managed to catch the move. But what if the swing trader entered short here? What if he thought that this was the point that Bitcoin was going to continue down lower? And then he's sitting through a drawdown all the way up here. Well, as a scalper, I'm going to be getting in and out. Ride the longs, ride the shorts, having no bias to the direction. What you need to do, guys, is think in terms of survival. All right. Because when you have that element of survival, you're going to be quick with your decisions. You're not going to have any bias. You're not going to allow yourself to bleed out. You're always going to be trying to protect yourself. All right. What's the first thing that someone does when they get shot? They protect the wound. They try and put pressure on it because they don't want to bleed to death. All right. They're not just going to wait there and be like, yeah, go and shoot me again. I'm a, I'm a machine. Come on and shoot me. No instinctively they just go to the point where they've been hurt and they're trying to protect it why can't you have that same approach with your trading account your account is in a negative position don't wait for it to play out get out change direction have no bias okay to whether you want to sit in a trade in the negative or not okay if it doesn't cut within the first two hours get out or if it's not moving in your favor straight away, change direction. Now, what I am saying now, you need to see this with a, you know, take this with a pinch of salt. I'm not saying that the moment that you open a trade, <coughs> excuse me. I'm not saying hypothetically, if you were to go short right now, oh, it's not going in my favor. I'm going to close it. No, you've got to give it, you know, you've got to give it a chance to move in relation to the time frame that you're trading. I mean, on the one minute time frame, you've seen before, I have no bias. I do not care. If I don't like the direction that it's taking, I'm going to be closing it and moving in the direction that it is trading. So, for example, look at this. If I were to take an entry right now, hypothetically, place an entry on price going down lower. OK, I make my entry. I'm waiting. OK, well, looks like it's moving in my favor. OK, happy days. I'm waiting. Now it looks like it isn't moving in my favor. What am I going to do? Am I going to get out? No, because I'm entering on the one minute time frame. All right. I need to give it a chance to work. And plus, it's not actually gone anywhere. 
based on my entry if I were to make my entry here for example okay so I was going short but now look price is going against me as a scalper I'm out I'm going to make an entry to go long now change my direction go long let's see what happens price is looking like now it wants to go back up am I right in my position to go up yes no a lot of decisions need to be made on the one minute time frame okay do I hold it do I not I'm looking at my balance, I'm paying attention to my risk. Now it's not actually gone anywhere, but I'm continuously observing it and I'm saying to myself, right, do I wanna hold this trade? I just thought it was gonna go short. Now I've gone long, I wanna see if I'm gonna be working in the right parameters. Is everything gonna go in my favor? It's not even been a minute yet since the open of this candle. What am I gonna do? Shall I hold it? So I start having this conversation with myself, paying attention to my exposure. Oh, I can now see prices going sort of in my favor. I'm going to start looking to get rid of my position. So I get myself ready. Do I want to close it yet? Do I think it's going to continue higher? If it doesn't break the 50 EMA, I'm going to get out of this trade before the start of the next candle. Six more seconds. Looks like it's breaking it. Maybe. Am I going to hold my position? I'm holding my trade. Didn't break it. Is it going to continue? Price is very close to the 50. I'm not going to hold that trade. Get out. Close my trade. Come back to the board and wait. Is it going to try and break this point? If it breaks the 50, I'm going to place my trade. Bang. Let's go long again. So you place your trade. Are you catching the momentum? Is price going to continue back up? Have I read this correctly? And you wait. And you play the game. There you go. It's now moving in my favor. I closed it earlier on and reopened again. I'm trying to catch the momentum. Paying attention to my risk. Not having a bias. Is it going to go back down? I'll open a short if I have to. It's rejecting the 50. I'll go short. As a scalper, this is what you're going through. As a swing trader, you haven't got really that luxury to do that. Okay? Because as a swing trader, you're looking at the 15 minute and even the hourly. Okay? It's not gone anywhere. Yeah? On the one minute time frame, you could see how busy it was. I'm having to absorb and make decisions quick, which means that if I'm in the red, I need to do something about it. If I'm in the green, I need to do something about it. So final thoughts. When it comes to risk, okay, you need to think in terms of survival because that's how you're only going to optimally perform. If you're thinking, how can I protect my account? If you want to put down 2% risk, keep in the back of your mind that you may be prepared to close at 1% because you may have understood that the direction of the trade is not going in your favor, then you have to be prepared to close up and open the trade in the opposite direction. This is a tough game, guys. I'm going to say it again. It's a very difficult game because it's all down to how you think. Now, I don't want to put you off this game, but I need you to take it seriously because it's the only way you're going to survive is if you start thinking in terms of survival. Don't put down money in your trades if you think it's not good. If, you, if, you, if you're the person that will open a trade and look at your balance and say, oh, I can spend $500 in a week or in a, in a day on shoes or on drinks, I'm not bothered about this money. It's the wrong mindset to have. All right. It's the wrong mindset. It means you're not going to take this seriously enough. It means that you're going to leave your money to get exposed in the red. And then I can guarantee that those of you that are sitting in the red, okay, would have absorbed that loss and you would have been happy with it, which means that you'll either start adding more money to it because you're used to the idea of having been in the red for so long in your trade and you just keep adding to it, keep adding to it and then get happier and used to that level of risk and that amount of exposure. And then you'll play in your mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm only risking money that I'm happy to lose. Nah, not the mindset to have. All right. That's not the mindset to have. There's no money that you should be happy to lose. You have to accept loss is part of this game. It's the success of loss that makes you stay in the game because if you're successful at keeping your losses to a minimum, your victorious trades will pay for those losses. All right? I hope that helps you guys and puts things into perspective for you. Yeah? Mad love and respect. Peace.